All right, so now's the point in the show where I think we need to stop down and we need to go over some numbers and digest what we saw there. 38 to 3. 15 of 28 passing from Aaron Rodgers. No touchdowns, two interceptions. And by the way, Damian, the Saints aren't the 85 Bears here, okay? What did we see from Aaron Rodgers today? Well, <clears throat> what we saw in this game was what we call the old-fashioned butt-whipping by the New Orleans Saints. They absolutely took it to Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. And, and you, what you got to understand about this Packers offense, they, they want to run the football. And the New Orleans Saints absolutely shut down the run game and put, basically put it all on Aaron Rodgers. And in that particular situation, one thing the Saints can do pretty well is they, they cover on the back end. And Aaron Rodgers really didn't have anywhere to go with the football. He was facing, you know, facing some pressure. And, um, man, this Saints, this Saints defense totally dismantled this Packers offense. But, it, but Tim, isn't – I mean, I, I'm sitting here and Dame's saying they want to run the football and they, and they put the game on Aaron Rodgers' shoulders. And I'm thinking, doesn't that exactly fall into Aaron Rodgers' strength, his game plan? I mean, what, what am I missing here? Well, it was interesting hearing Aaron sound after the game. He's talking about, look, they played a bunch of two shell. What he's saying is they had two safeties deep for yep. the majority of the game, and they held up in the run game with their front four or their front six, you know, getting the linebackers involved uh, at that level. You know, to me, it sounds like, hey, why weren't we running the football? Now, he obviously took some blame with the interception that he threw, but look, that was part of it. And then, look, when you flip it over, you look at the Saints – they were able to run the football. Mm -hmm. They were controlling it. You know, Aaron Rodgers talking about, hey, there was just, you know, three opportunities and then a two-minute drive in the in the first half. That's because these sustained drives and the willingness to stick with and run the football well. So that to me was really the the, the difference early on in the game. And then as Aaron talked about kind of that lull, not having that energy. Look, part of what happens is when you're sitting on the sideline watching another team, you know, sustain long drives, it's hard to get into any type of rhythm as an offense, and then you don't feel like you can be as patient with your own drive. So I think part of the struggles, yes, the defense played well, but on the other side, the Saints, the way they controlled the line of scrimmage was a huge factor. And I mean, the Saints, they ran the ball 39 times. They literally ran the ball right down the Packers' throats. So what that did was you didn't have Jameis Winston throwing the ball all over the place. I think he only had 21 attempts, and he had five touchdowns. Five! Passes. But see, that's what the running game does for you in this particular situation. When you're able to control the game up front, dominate the game up front, it just opens up, it just opens up everything in your playbook, and Jameis just played absolutely phenomenal. Should mention uh, Adam Sheffer just tweeting this out that Marshawn Lattimore for the Saints, five year extension, $97.6 million, 68.3 <laughs> guarantees. So it was a real good day for him. That's a, that's a heck of a victory Monday it's coming up for him. <laughs> Get back in the locker room. That's waiting in your locker room. That's, I would right. that's a pretty good day. And boy, the Saints with quarterback questions coming into this season, those questions are answered for one week a 38 3 pounding on the road, if you will, in Jacksonville, of course, with all the effects of Ida impacting the New Orleans area. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.